Before I became a documentary filmmaker, my dream was to be a photojournalist. I was obsessed with the idea of the foreign correspondent, that photographer who traveled around the world for big name publications covering the most important stories at the time. I wanted to test myself and experience things that most people don't and then come out with the pictures to prove it. I was so focused on that goal that I spent two years and the price of a master's degree on building a documentary photography portfolio before eventually moving to Phnom Penh, Cambodia full time to go after that dream for real. When I first got there, it took a while to get going. In fact, for the first eight months I was there, I didn't publish a single photo in any newspaper and no editor seemed interested in my pitches. It was incredibly frustrating and I was actually pretty close to quitting forever. Then, due to a strange combination of persistence and luck, everything changed. I went from having no real publication credits to my name to getting my photo on the front page of the international edition of the New York Times. I'm talking A1 above the fold front page. When I first saw it, I couldn't believe it. And it's not an exaggeration to say that it was probably the proudest moment of my life up to that point. In this video, I'm going to tell you the story of how I made that happen and outline the main principles of how I did it so that you can apply that to going after your own creative dreams. Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth, documentary cinematographer and filmmaker. And on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned over 10 years working as a documentary filmmaker and photographer. As a photographer, there's nothing quite as satisfying as seeing your work in print, whether that's in a gallery, on a billboard, in a magazine, or even just on your own walls. When I was a photographer, I was never interested in commercial work. I always dreamed of being one of those National Geographic people who got to challenge themselves in harsh and dangerous environments. For me, the point of photography was to communicate what was happening in the real world to other people and so for me the goal was always to get published in newspapers. I'm not sure how that happened and I definitely had no background in journalism or photography for that matter. In fact I'm pretty positive that the first time I even understood that photojournalism was a real job was when I watched the documentary War Photographer after finding it on one of those top 10 documentaries to download today or something like that. If you haven't seen that movie I highly recommend it. That doc literally changed my life because when I saw it, I was working as an English teacher in South Korea and it directly led me down the path I'm on today. It follows the war photographer James Noctua, who's one of the best of all time, through a year of working in conflict zones around the world. And if you're interested in documentary filmmaking or photography, I'm sure you'll love it as much as I did. So as soon as I saw it, I decided that I was going to do the same thing. I had all these fantasies of being just like Nockway, putting myself in danger, and coming out with the best photos that ran in all the biggest newspapers. Problem was, I'd never published a single picture and I had no idea how to get started. Some of you watching this video might be in a similar situation, where you're really interested in becoming a photographer or a filmmaker, but you feel super confused about where to begin. That's exactly where I was when I decided I was gonna become a photojournalist. So don't worry if you're there too. The main thing is that if you wanna make something like that happen, Happen, you actually just have to commit and decide that you're going to make it happen no matter what. One tip here is that if you want a better chance of sticking to a commitment like this, you should announce it publicly so you feel a little bit of pressure of accountability, which I think is super important. Personally, I started out by making a website and posting it to all my social media channels, pretty much telling everybody I knew that out of nowhere, I was suddenly a photojournalist. If I'm being honest, it was terrifying and more than a little embarrassing. I didn't really have a portfolio and my pictures kind of sucked. Okay, they totally sucked. And I really didn't know how people would react. That was probably the hardest part of the whole process, to be honest, just getting over that initial fear of what people would think. A few people did send me snarky and sarcastic comments, and I'd be lying if I said they didn't bother me, but way more people than that were overwhelmingly supportive and told me to go for it. And honestly, the majority of people didn't care at all. They were too busy worrying about their own lives to pay attention to what I was doing. And I think that's something to keep in mind when you're stressing about starting your own career. Other people just really aren't thinking about you as much as you think they are. So just put yourself out there because nobody really cares. The accountability of going public with my decision was a super important decision though, because it kept me motivated to stick to my goal. I started by creating simple photo stories on a blog, which I posted once a week or so. I started casually when I was still a teacher, shooting street photos in Seoul, and then after a while, when I quit my job and bought a one-way ticket to Bangladesh, I went into overdrive and did it like it was my full-time job. I took a workshop with a photographer I really admired who taught me the basics of photography and how to approach documentary subject matter, and then spent the next year traveling around Asia by myself, shooting photos pretty much every day. I did a ton of different stories in that time. 
I investigated child labor in Bangladesh. I moved on to a cockfighting farm in a tent in downtown Manila. I crawled into illegal gold mines and I hung out with Buddhist monks. I lived and breathed photography as much as I could. And even though I still wasn't an amazing photographer, I was getting better all the time. And that's something I'd say was critical at the beginning. And that's to practice as much as possible. This might sound like really obvious advice, but I think people need to hear it again and again. If you don't practice super hard, you'll never get anywhere, whether your goal is to shoot photos or direct movies. You don't have to travel to Asia to make that happen either. Just go out there and make stuff. Trust me, it's the only way you'll get off the ground. Eventually I decided I needed a home base, so I moved to Phnom Penh, the capital of Cambodia. I chose that place because it was full of interesting stories, it was really cheap, and they had very relaxed visa rules. At that time, Cambodia was going through major political unrest, and without going into too much detail, I'll just say that there were two parties fighting it out for control of the country, and it wasn't at all friendly. When I landed, I still hadn't got a single photo published in a newspaper, but right away, I started looking up all the other photographers I could find in town and inviting them to coffee. Now, some of them weren't all that interested and didn't respond, but quite a few others were incredibly warm and welcoming and took me under their wing. They started taking me with them to protests every day, and little by little, I got a sense of the situation and how to work safely in those environments. And that's something else I can't emphasize enough. You need to network, especially in the beginning. You'll never succeed alone and word of mouth is so important in freelance creative careers. So no matter where you are, reach out to other people and make those connections. I wouldn't have even gotten started without the help of those people in Phnom Penh. So don't overlook this step, please. Some of the protests were long and boring marches that took hours and nothing at all happened. Some were really scary and violent where riot police would shoot off tear gas and start clubbing people. It didn't so much matter what happened on the day. What counted was that I went out every day and kept shooting. I had no assignments, so I just uploaded the photos to my blog and kept going. After six months of this, I'd gotten some small jobs for local aid organizations, but I couldn't seem to get any of the newspapers interested. It was starting to get a little frustrating, and I'll be honest, I was starting to think I'd made a big mistake and that maybe I'd be better off doing something else. Then, one day, one of those protests exploded after the military beat up a group of unarmed civilians outside a clothing factory. Word spread, and for whatever reason, the protesters had had enough and pushed pushed back hard against the government. They started lighting fires, filling Molotov cocktails, and barricading themselves into buildings. This continued late into the night, and the later it got, the more and more of the other photographers went home. Eventually, it was just me and one other guy, plus a video team from the local paper. At around 2 a.m., the police attacked a building full of barricaded protesters, and I got some really dramatic photos of them charging in with their riot clubs and their shields held overhead while the city burned in the background. When I got home, I was so excited about the pictures I was sure I was going to make a ton of money selling them. But when I sent them to the local bureau chief for one of the biggest newswire agencies in the world, he told me that they were only interested in buying one single photo and that their maximum budget was $25. I sent him the picture anyways, but I was devastated and really pissed off. And honestly, I went to bed thinking that I was going to quit the next day and start looking for another teaching job anything to get away from this stupid industry. But the next day, the military opened fire on a group of protesters and several people died. It was incredibly sad and totally shocking and suddenly Cambodia was front and center in the news. And because my picture was floating around the newswire, it started to appear in slideshows all over the place. I saw it on time.com and the New York times.com and a bunch of other places. Then eventually the print edition of the International New York Times came out and my picture was on the front page. I will never forget that feeling as the PDF file of the digital paper loaded line by line until I realized that it was my picture. Now, I really don't wanna gloss over the fact that this was an extremely sad event and that real people lost their lives. People in the press corps and the protest movement were all devastated and deeply shocked when it happened and you never want anyone to lose their life so you can get a photo in a newspaper. But professionally speaking, it was a huge milestone for me. I went from having almost no publication credits to my name to having my photo on the front page of the biggest newspaper in the world, literally overnight. The rest of my career was built off the back of that moment. With the credibility I got from that picture, I started to get regular job shooting for the Times until eventually I was covering pretty much every one of their Cambodia stories. That led to more and more work with other publications and within a year or so, I was working regularly. From photojournalism, I eventually moved into documentary film production and here we are today. This all might sound like I just got super lucky, 
And I did. But it's important to remember that luck only strikes when you're in the right position to take advantage of it. All of that stuff happened because I'd been practicing unpaid for two years and had been shooting protests every day for six months. So when something big finally happened, I'd put in the work to be ready. I'd bet that a lot of people with successful creative careers have some sort of lucky break story like this. You can never predict when that chance might come, but the important thing is that you're ready when it does. So commit and then practice, practice, practice until one day, out of nowhere, something will click. No one's gonna be able to tell you when or how exactly, but without going through all of those years of working for free, I never would have gotten that front page photo. I hope that story was interesting for you and that some of those takeaways are giving you ideas or motivation in your own careers as photographers or filmmakers or whatever it is that you do. If you've ever experienced a long period of feeling like you're getting nowhere, or if you've had a lucky break of your own, tell me about it in the comments. And if you like this video, why not check out this other one I made about the role luck plays in getting started. See ya.